Live from Copenhagen, Denmark, it's theCUBE. Covering Nutanix.next 2019. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Nutanix.next here at the Bella Center in Copenhagen, Denmark. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We're joined by two guests this segment. We have Mayur Shah, he is the Global Head Data Center and Software Defined Everything SDX at WePro. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. And Tenu Kit Kitapa, you. Director, GSI Sales at Nutanix. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So we're talking today about fluid ITs. WePro, of course, is an Indian uh, multinational corporation based in Bangalore. Talk a little, you're, you're, you gave us a, a, a talk yesterday here at Nutanix.next. Tell our, tell our viewers a little bit about how you view fluid IT. Sure. So. We, we believe that uh, the, the, the kind of transition industry is going through, the, the pressure businesses are uh, getting in terms of uh, having their offering uh, aligned to the customer expectations, the digital natives and uh, so and so forth have digital transformation. They are also under tremendous pressure of uh, innovating much faster than they used to do before. And you know the same pressure has been put back to the IT. How IT support that kind of uh, you know, changes and agility, which business would need in general. Uh, we believe that uh, now, previously we used to have a plan for five years uh, and the roadmap, and, and we used to forecast what kind of architecture we should be in. But now it's time for uh, us to, uh, you know, give that back to uh, business. There are a lot of uncertainties, and how, how we can handle those uncertainties, that's the main reason why we are thinking a little out of box in terms of getting things fluid. Yeah, yeah. My, here, I, I like that, that comment because uh, part of the transition used to be I bought a product, and I thought about how many years did I depreciate right. that product for? So I want to get your, you know, what, what are you seeing and how is it impacting your customers? Nutanix talks about building experiences. So. Are they meeting that goal? Uh, you know, how is that helping uh, with uh, both what, what, what you're doing and ultimately your end customers? So, uh, what we believe is, uh, as you rightly said, right, and their end user customers' experience, uh, business agility, and um, their uh, competitiveness for customers at the, at the prime, right? So, the way we uh, are now uh, aligning our offerings, aligning uh, to customer needs, changing our models of uh, measurements from SLS to business uh, level uh, BLS. I mean, those, those are the things which we are doing for uh, aligning to their business needs and, and ensuring that they benefit uh, in terms of, many of our offering are now experience driven. So uh, if, and SLS and BLS are also experience driven. So we, in, in our virtual desk uh, offering, we offer to customers based on the experience problem, uh, the, the penalties are been uh, assigned. Yep. So we proactively manage their end user experience without them even knowing it, right? So, so those are the few examples. Yeah. So Tano, I ha have to imagine this is a big piece of your job. Is oh. The traditional channel, uh, you know, used to be, you know, how do we get beyond selling boxes, uh, selling services, consulting <laughs> and everything up, but the SI I I is more about that, that whole experience. It's actually a whole different experience. It's been a great show for us from that perspective. We have a lot of our partners turning up, giving us the support we need from the SI community. Vipro was a sponsor, so it's been great. And to be honest, that's exactly what we're trying to do with SIs here. We're taking the solution and outcome-based approach. Let's talk to the customer what their business needs are. Let's see what kind of solutions we build to fit that, right? It's not just Nutanix. How does Nutanix work with HPE? How does Nutanix work with the networking, SDN? Like, let's give them an outcome-based solution. And let's support it with the right level of experience. So essentially, just in time to market, is the goal that we're trying to achieve with partners like Wipro. Tenno, can you give us some examples of what the kinds of conversations that you're having and then how it influences you when you go back to your company and you, and you go back to Nutanix and you are then in the war room trying to figure out what, what kind of next new architectures and designs you can provide? So normally when we work with customers and with GSIs, right, you start with the core problem of what are you trying to solve over here, right? You have a five-year uh, plan are you trying to grow to a certain extent? Are you looking for your VDI uh, to cater to a certain security needs or a certain 
um, financial needs. And so then it comes down to what is a business requirement here? Is it scalability? Is it reliability? Is it security? Is it financial modeling, right? You might be sitting with a customer who says, this is a great option, but I don't have budget to do this, right? I want to transform myself to the next level of technology, but I don't have a budget. And when we have these joint co co customer conversations with partners like Wipro, they say, great, let's offer a solution. And here by solution, we not only cater to the technology, but we're also looking at where you need to end up in five years, what kind of business models and commercial models we can do to support you, and what are the right products we can bring to you such that you only concern yourself with the outcome. You don't care about the infrastructure stack underneath it. Let's make everything invisible for you. But they just take our invisible story to the whole different level. Yeah. Uh, Mayur, when I think about the, the transformations that customers are going through, it's the, the education and training is often a, a big piece of that. Um, where does that fit into yeah. what you're doing, uh, what, what services WePro offers education there, and how, how much of it does the, just the simplicity of Nutanix uh, you know, involved in that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great question. So, so what we actually, and, and it helps us a lot, uh, when we bring in the complex technologies for, for our uh, end customers, they also have the owners and they need to get appreciative of what, what we are offering. Uh, with Nutanix simplicity, it's all given. I mean, they know that uh, things work and things work super simple. Now, whatever we bring on top of that, that's where uh, it, it adds a lot of value without wasting too much of time for enabling our end customers, and, and that, that gives the out, outcome. So we are, I mean, as a whole, as a solution, we are able to give that outcome uh, confidence and experience to a customer. So what, do you, what kinds of conversations are you having at this conference in terms of what kinds of learnings are going on where you're talking to uh, fellow customers of Nutanix and, and able to say, hey, what you're doing over there, maybe we could try something similar at, at WePro. Yes, so, so uh, one, one good part, what I've seen, people are using uh, platform for variety of use cases, variety of uh, business applications. Now, we at, New, uh, at Wipro, we have mastered some of them, but not all of them. Uh, but we see a lot of customers speaking about how they are using massive scale for their hybrid cloud, for instance. They are using it for uh, databases, application, mission critical applications. And, and, and we, we feel now it's time for us to venture into that all, all, all hog, right? So with, with all house pass. I actually like to add to that, right? All the conversations we've had is amazing with customers. You think you've built a product to meet X use cases, and then the customer comes back and says, you guys did great with Beam on these X use cases, but guess what? I, divide, I found out this X plus one use case, and it's perfect. And then that is what we take back and say, okay, is there a market around this which we can then commercialize and make it easy to consume? What would you say, so you're based in San Jose yes. and you've been with Nutanix for five years now. What would you say are some of the differences that you've seen from U.S. customers versus here we are in Copenhagen, European customers and, and also Indian customers? Oh, wow, that's a difficult question. You're really putting me in a difficult <laughs> position here. But in general, I would, you know, um, our European customers look to innovation, but they also looked to baked in solutions and more tighter integration collaboration with partners. The US customers want to be on the cutting edge of technology. They're very high risk takers. So when you're defining a solution and a model that works for them, it's a completely different ball game in terms of how much risk they're willing to take, what price point they want to do. And then they're also very, very particular about, I want vendor A, B, and C to work together. Go make it happen, right? With a lot of the Indian and the Asian customers and even our European customers, they're more SLA based. Mayor, what do you think? Absolutely. I think uh, we, we see a clear, here in, in this area of Europe, uh, they are much mature, the second and third level of outsourcing people. They're aware of SLAs, they are aware of the services. They expect a little more than what we do. And we, uh, let's say if you, compare that to India and, and US in some time. They, they are the first time or second time outsourcers. Uh, but here is the difference. Uh, they, they clearly bother about the outcome. All right, uh, Mayur, uh, what, when, uh, what, what 
the announcements that we've had this week? Are there uh, anything that you're looking to take back uh, to your customers, uh, or you know, anything that uh, either announced or some of the previews they've been giving that that you're especially excited about? Sure. So I think uh, you know, there's a great timing. I was just talking last night. Um, we are doing. Uh, investments, uh, innov innovation investment for three, three years. It's a three years plan. Uh, and exactly the its synergies are so well. The announcement what we have heard here are kind of synergizing what we are doing um, in, in the roadmap. For example, we, we and the Fluid ID, what she told, uh, is all about uh, delivering those uh, you know, next generation future proof architecture, leveraging those announcements. So we, I, I uh, the era we are working on database as a service, which which covers the mission critical applications and and things in a much advanced way, and, and we we believe uh, in our roadmap we are we calling it a service theater, which actually delivers the experience and outcome, right? So there are synergies. They talked about insights, and and we 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 are talking about delivering those uh, real time predictable stuff uh, based on and uh, our our vision is to give intent based everything. So you have to just define the intent, and you know things will fall in place. So you know there are a lot of synergies, and we we definitely take back few of them. Era, uh, which is databases as a service, insights, uh, IoT, edge, are the few key, thing, key things we'll take it from here. And of course the hybrid cloud, the AWS migration. Well, Mayur is being very, very humble here. One of the announcements that we did make over here at the conference was Wipro has standardized with Nutanix on their yeah. virtual desk solution, and we're going big to both our customers, their customers, and our field with this offering. So it's, virtual desk is their own IP. They've done very well in the past with virtual desk, but as they are looking to do more standardization, get into the next generation solutions, we worked very closely with them to build a Nutanix and HPE based stack with Citrix to offer this as a turnkey solution, which they've already done, but with better economics and time to market. And do you see that as sort of the future? The oh yes, that pretty much becomes a fundamental building block based on which w almost all of our other solutions are going to get built, right? The next one coming up will be database as a service. Similar constructs, how do you make database consumption and ops transparent to the end user? Followed by IoT, now IoT is a real different ball game because everything is customized. A lot of customers like to go dabble in it, but at the end of the solution, end of the end of the day, you need to build a solution around it. Yeah, and, and Tenu, actually, it's one, one of the questions we've had is we look uh, as Nutanix moves beyond just infrastructure software to some of the application software, yes. se seems that GSIs would be a critical player yes. for, for building yes. these services. Yes, yeah, we actually have this really funky graph, you know, verticals, base uh, AOS, where do GSIs fit in? It's the solution and pulling everything together and making it more of a customer business case based offering as opposed to the customer piecing itself. And it's becoming a big ask with the GS, uh, G2Ks, right? They're not doing large RFPs, they're actually doing very business based SLAs and now the control lies with the business owners within large customers. So it fits very well with our story. Excellent, well thank you so much Tenu and Mayur. Thank you for coming thank on theCUBE. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank our you. pleasure. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. We will have more from theCUBE's live coverage of Nutanix.next coming up in just a little bit.